You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Gene. Johnson. After Buzz TV. After Buzz TV. From the AfterBuzz studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is AfterBuzz TV's Killer Women After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's Killer Women After Show. Yeah. Hey. I like this. Yeah, good song yeah. choice. Right? This is different yeah. from last week. Yeah. <laughs> hey. Hey, guys. I'm Chloe Onyx, your host today for episode three, Killer Women Warrior. And I'd like to introduce you to my lovely co-hosts. I am Candice Bonostro. I am Sarah Huggins. I love that Bonostro. Yeah, I know. Like I like so had to sultry. follow that. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> I love it. We're missing Oriana Leo. It's her birthday today. Yes. Happy, Happy birthday. Happy birthday. I'm all delayed. You guys yeah. are on cue. <laughs> oh my gosh. We miss you. So hurry up and yeah. come back. <laughs> we'll see you next week. So episode three, Warrior. This was a very, very like action packed. Like I felt like I was in the movies. Like what did you guys think? Like we opened up with like a bank robbery. With and pageant queens. With pageant queens. Which I really like. That was so prim and proper. And I'm, bullet caps in their hair. And bullet <laughs> caps in their hair. But their hair is so big that they didn't feel it. Yeah. I know. Did But you know it was so funny. And when Molly comes up to like talk to the to the witnesses, they're like how do you know it's a woman? They were like this and like that and yeah. like <laughs> like just so like you know like girls boobs so cute it was so super cute so what did you guys think about the opening like compared to the other two episodes like just that big bang thriller kind of movie action going on I liked the beginning I thought it was a nice I thought it was different enough from the other the previous two and I liked I liked the action I liked that it like sucked you right in yeah I like that. Um, like we start to see this theme of different killer women. Like I'm like, all right, this week's yeah. killer woman yeah. is Andrea, the war vet who has like this heart of gold and she wants to make a difference. Maybe not in the most um, best way possible. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, like I'm just like, oh, okay, every week we're going to have a different killer woman and her story is going to be, you know, dependent on whatever the situation is. Um, it's kind of intriguing. What do you guys think about that? The only thing I don't like about it, I would say, is that it's so predictable. Like I mm. need some I need there to be one killer woman who doesn't either survive or get away or you know, or not get away, but like they catch her and it's like a done deal. Like I need I would like it if one lasted maybe more than one episode mm. and they couldn't catch her or something like that. That would make it a little more intriguing for me. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I'm just like, I know, like, so far the pattern in the three episodes has been, like, they introduce her, they catch her at the end, and, like, all is well. It's, like, very after-school special. So <laughs> I'm hoping for something else. But, I I mean, I liked it. I thought this story was really intriguing. It was, like, Robin Hood-esque. So right. Andrea, the war vet slash Robin Hood. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I really liked her shit in this episode. I mean, the killer wasn't essentially the killer. She was just trying to do good, give people money, and, you know, it's kind of... At so it's like, it. how badass is our killer woman really if she's right. getting caught at the end? Right. <laughs> a little bit of me wanted her to escape after. Me but too. You know, right, but that getaway, once she turned around in that parking garage, it can only go downhill from there. Yeah, a parking garage, there's really not a lot of ways out. You know what I was thinking? It. it would be like super like cool or hot if she would have just like got on her motorcycle and like drove off the edge and like landed on I another thought. building or, like Batman style like <laughs> over them yeah. you know I'm like all yeah. right she's trained she has all of this experience if she wanted to kill you she could kill yeah. you like all right let her like you know live a little like go yeah. through a glass window through her motorcycle and you can't find her you yeah. know like <laughs> just a little more like oomph but maybe that's not in the budget yeah you know like <laughs> I, know. I mean but it's ABC I mean I don't know I'm just saying yeah no but it was good <laughs> I, the story was nice it was a it was a sweet story yeah know? 
So let's jump into, because I feel like this is something that's a continuation from the last episode, which is Billy and Candace, that, you know, Billy's her brother. And from the last episode, we got that him and his wife, Becca, were having, like, these little bit of marital issues, and Molly didn't really want to, like, step her step in there but you know right. she is like a ranger and that's her thing is to investigate so we see like off the bat her and her brother billy just getting into it and she's accusing him of cheating on his wife so like what did you guys think initially do you feel like molly needs to mind her business because she has her own like pool of problems to deal with or as a sister-in-law trying to look out for a sister, you right. know, and even her brother, because he could lose his whole, his whole family over this. So, like, what did you guys think about, like, initially just her, you know, just just tell him, like, you're a liar. You There's nothing wrong with the irrigation system. Where were you last week? I think she's kind of projecting her own life onto her brother and the, the sister-in-law because her problems with her ex-husband. I just think she has so much problems built up. She's just kind of like projecting onto them. And I don't think, th- I still don't think the brother's doing anything wrong. Like There's something going on. I'm Ooh. sorry. There is something going on I don't on think there's me. another woman, but I think there's something going on. But I don't think he's cheating. I still don't think he's cheating. I don't think he's cheating either because I feel like they were like kind of calling him out and being very accusatory last episode. Like his wife was like, you know, asking him a hundred questions and stuff. So I feel like but that's Hispanic women. Oh, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I didn't know. Um, but I feel like, yeah, it's not that he's cheating, but there's definitely he's not 100% innocent. And mm. I love how we didn't really even get to see, like we got a little teaser of something that he was doing, which ended up not being an affair. Exactly. We thought it was, possibly. I knew it wasn't that cut and dry, but it ended up being super G-rated. Yeah. Um, Quinceanera party yeah. planner. I know. And you know, it's so crazy because I thought, like, mm, busted. Like, immediately, I just, you know, I just thought, yeah. oh, he's a liar. But I do feel like something's going on. Not sure quite what is right. going on. But I feel like in due time, it will unravel. Right. But I feel like his wife is a little bit intrusive as well. Like, if you notice, every time Molly and Billy are having a conversation, Becca's like, well, what are you talking about? Nosy. (laughs) Exactly. Like, she's just so nosy. Like, can I breathe? Like, she's mosa. Like, a gossiper. Like, oh, my God, what's going on? Like... (laughs) Yeah. Is, is that common too? Like, I mean, I don't know. Are, are, <laughs> to be like, nosy. Yeah, to be nosy because you're like, that's Latino women. Is that a thing? I um, mean, I just think she just wants to be involved of her husband's life in all aspects of it. So mm-hmm. there's there's no barrier. And I think she does feel like he's cheating on her. Like, if you notice in the last episode, she's like, <laughs> like sniffing all his yeah. clothes all the time. And like, that's the sign of an insecure woman or a woman that, you know, su- to the extreme. Su- yeah, that suspects that something's going on. And then he's lying. So it's like, come on, Billy, like, just be real. Like, yeah, what? like, I wonder, like, what it could be. I have a feeling it's going to be something really silly like he just I don't know wants to like have a man cave somewhere or something like right. weird like, or he likes to like secretly take tap dancing lessons right, right. <laughs> isn't it always in the is that yes. cheesy corny like typical television or I guess. or no if it's not the other way if it's not like totally scandalous and crazy it's probably very PG right or mm-hmm. cheesy like you know I just I wanted to learn how to dance yeah. for you you always say I <laughs> yeah. have two left feet yeah so I don't know that that should be very interesting yeah it's one of the more interesting parts of the show to me is that in their relationship and do you feel like Molly needs to butt out of the situation no I want to know what's going on I mean obviously something is so yeah. I'm nosy. I have a little yeah. brother, and I'm always all in his business. Oh, yeah. No, I, I mean, would want to know. He's a kid, and he doesn't really have business, but you know kids are grown these days. So I'm always like, well, what's going Like, you have a girlfriend? Like, what's her name? Like, where does she yeah. live? Where's her mother? You know? Yeah. like. So, I mean, as a sister to a brother, I totally understand. If he was an adult, he probably, like, cursed me out because I, I'm that kind of sister, too. Like, you know, I'm not going to let you ruin your family, ETC. So, I mean, I think Molly's doing what she's supposed to be doing yeah. as a good sister. I'm actually shocked she hasn't followed him yet or done anything other than ask him, really. Right? Yeah. What about you, Candace? What do you think? 
I think she does have a right to be a little worried, but like I said, I think she has so much stuff going on, she needs to focus on herself and let them figure their own problems out. Because essentially, they haven't caught him cheating. There's not, He's not cheating yet. He just has something else going on on the side. And, uh, something else. Not, yeah, something else. Yeah. Oh, something else. But we don't know. A little extra. <laughs> exactly. All right, so speaking of Molly and getting her own personal life together, let's talk about her and Dan. Because there's so much with them, this episode going on, from her starting to open up in the car yeah. and talk about her own personal stuff, um, to her and Dan fighting. So what did you guys think about this episode, just just the different things they went through to even in the end where, you know, she kind of just told them to back up a little bit? I think she was a little selfish. Ooh, selfish. Why Why selfish? That's well, I mean, the ex-husband is subpoenaed him to go to court to testify that they... Because they're still legally married, her and her ex, to go to court to testify that they're having an affair. Yeah. And he's an undercover DEA agent, and it's all about her. She's like, well, oh, you don't want to uh, inconvenience your life. And it's like, really? You're like, put yeah, yourself he, in issues. So. He, but he's technically, like having relations with a married woman. They're, so, they're separated. I, they're separated. I know, but I don't really feel that bad for him. Like, he kind of mm. knew what he was getting himself into is what the way I feel about it. But mm. See, that's true, too. I feel like it's a give and take. Like, they're obviously, like, a girlfriend-boyfriend or growing to that level yeah. kind of relationship. And I feel like for her, it's very tough. Like, she's come from apparently an abusive relationship, and now she's trying to stand her ground. I mean, I get for him it would be easier, but it's kind of hard when you're, like, an independent woman, when you want to stand your ground, when you're trying to make it known to an abuser that you will right. not be abused, that I am not going to let you continue to control me. So it's, like, in a sense, in a way, I do get where she's coming from. Like, she wants mm -hmm. him to know you know, like, you, you're not going to beat me at this, you know? And it's kind of tough. Like, I feel like Jake is a, just a big jerk. Yeah, you know? we didn't see him this episode either. I was either. so happy. Me I was like, yes. too. <laughs> and then you could kind of see also Molly, you know, you could uh, put yourself in her shoes, just being a girl and looking at her phone, like, should I text him? Okay, she felt kind of bad for the way she treated him. She's like, okay, am I going to text Dan, DEA Dan? Well, or? and she changed his name yeah. by the end of the episode. <laughs> yeah, she did. Dan Winston. Dan Winston. She yes. changed his name because they got a little more personal. Really. I know. That is so funny. I just think, like, with Dan, he is, okay, first of all, Molly is in a place where I feel like she's always struggling between being independent and hardcore and then vulnerable. Like when, like when we see her in the car and she shares that moment about her mom and cancer and all those things, I'm like, wow. And then the same token, she's just like, you know, she gets rough and tough again, you know, because they're pretty much staking out, you know, Andrea, uh, vet killer woman, yeah. <laughs> killer woman of the week. But it's just like, I feel almost as if she's just like confused. Like she has to constantly be tough but she's also trying to be vulnerable but she constantly can't be vulnerable because she just came out of an abusive relationship right so i feel like it's just so many levels like you know they say there's levels to this ish like there's yeah. just levels mm -hmm. to it for her specifically and i feel like you know dan has to be patient like he well, chose yeah, she's not ready yet for another relationship i don't think yet okay so do you think that she should there should like you know when she says to dan um well, then, you know, go to your simple life, and if that's what you wanted before, then, you know, uh, you, do you feel like that was the best decision for her to make? I mean, I don't think she means that. Mm, no, she I wanted it. Just because you're not ready doesn't mean that you're not going to do it, and you're not going to want it, you know? True. And you have needs, so. Yeah, well, psychology. <laughs> um, exactly. You know, so she's, I, I don't think that that's something she wanted to do. I think that was, like, kind of her way of trying to push him away and see kind of like a test to see if he was going to, leave her, you know, stick around for the long haul. So. And he did stick around because yeah. he sent her that text message of the tennis shoes, like, I'm in it for the long haul. Yeah, <laughs> right? Like, and he was just so hurt, like, I'm offended if you really think that, da 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 So I, I kind of felt bad for Dan, but then, you know, I... I Sometimes as a woman, we get very prideful. Just in men, too, they get very prideful in their yeah. moments. And I felt like for her, she felt like she had to stand her ground. But it's very interesting how in the end, she's very much so like, you know, she replies to Dan. And then she's like, she gives in to Jake's, you know, I guess his his court. What, what are they What are they having? Court? Subpoena. Oh, the court of uh, couples um, counseling. The couples counseling. Thank they have, you. They have to go to four of those in order for the judge to consider a divorce. And what, I mean... 
for I feel so bad for the fact that she married a senator, so it's kind of like he has everybody politically in his back pocket. Right. And she's kind of like suckered into, you know, it's like it's just not fair. Like the judge isn't fair. <laughs> like nothing is fair. She just kind of have to like roll with it. What do you guys feel or think like is going to happen moving forward with Jake because, you know, they're going to have to go to counseling. Of course, he's always saying, like, he loves her and doesn't want to give up on this and da 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 Like, do you guys feel like thing, her feelings could change later or just, you know, happen no. to be... <laughs> no? no? No, he's so creepy. They mm -hmm. could have at least made him, like, somewhat Handsome. attractive, right, and <laughs> yeah. appealing. Like make he's him believable. Not, right, he's not at all. He seems way older than her. I don't know if he is, but he seems older. He's a little creepy. I do not see her going back to him at all in any way, shape, or form. Like, as soon as she can get out, she will. She's no, out not for the she coat. has her young little, <laughs> yeah. hot little hot DA boyfriend. agent. Oh, yeah. gosh. <laughs> all right, so let's jump back into Andrea because, of course, she is, like, a lot of the subject matter of this right. week. And, of course, we all know that she's um, a war vet hero. And her good deeds, it's like her good bad deeds is she's stealing this money from different banks to give to different war vets who have lost limbs, who are not being supported, who don't have any money. And she's pretty much dropping off like $10,000 plus dollars on their nightstands and to help them pay their bills. I mean... It's in a freaky way. It's almost like, oh, good Samaritan, but she's also robbing banks of, like, you and I's money. You know what right. I'm saying? Like, what do you guys think? Like, it's very ox oxymoron in a, in a sense. Like, what do you guys just think about her deeds just overall and just, you know, the good and the bad and the ugly in the, in the situation? I mean, I just think the psychological aspect of it, I think she, you know, she has post-traumatic stress disorder coming back from war and, you know, and exactly Molly touches base on it. She feels right, like herself, when she's getting this high adrenaline rush from, like, shooting guns or, like, and being robbing at war. banks. But, and I think the takeaway is uh, it helps her conscience to give the money to these vets because it makes her mm. feel like she's doing something right. But... I mean, I do feel like the war vet she gave the money to and he called the cops. I, and I think he was a little ungrateful. I think she worked hard to give him that money. He should have kept the money. Really? <laughs> That's like, right. I mean, if it was you, would you have given the money back? Yeah, of course. You would have? Mm -hmm. You're good. Would you, would you have yeah, given the money back? It'd be different if I like, found the money. Like One time, just a side note, I found $100 outside of a Rite Aid. And mm -hmm. I thought like I was being punked or something. I looked around. It was 5 a.m. in the morning. I was like going to the gym or something. And I looked around like I was seriously being punked and no one came and I felt so guilty like that was someone's money I almost went inside to turn it in and everyone was like don't do that because they're just gonna keep someone's gonna keep the money there like exactly. at the store so you got all right so if someone legit like dropped ten thousand dollars on your nightstand because they know you needed it you would give it to the well, I wouldn't call the cops like oh my god there's this money that yeah, that, yeah that's what I'm saying like if someone dropped ten thousand dollars and listen you could have a trip you want to go on, some bills you got to pay, whatever it is, you would call the cops and give it back? Ugh, I just, I believe that nothing in life is truly free, so <laughs> I would be very skeptical. I think I would, like, leave it where exactly where I found it and, like, not touch it. I'm a good person, so I would think that it's just my good karma. See, good like, karma, just God, is yeah. working these miracles yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> Thank you. I was, yeah, I don't, I couldn't, I, mm, like, because what would you, like, where where would you go? Who would you give it to? Like, what would you even say? Like I said, I would just leave it where you I would. Donate it. it on like. your nightstand? Yes. Like, I wouldn't touch it. I would think it was going to go away. That's, you, would, you would think it would go away? Yeah, that doesn't happen. Like, you don't wake up with Why money on your Why should wake up night. tomorrow yeah. and have, I like... Wish. Please, <laughs> yeah. under your if pillow. that could happen, that would be great. But, no, like, seriously, if that happened to me... I mean, but if you had heard people were robbing banks, like someone was robbing banks and stuff like that. I don't watch the news like that. But oh, see, so, so I, yeah, I could legit just junkie. be like, I don't know. The news is uh, depressing. It, thank you. And that's something I get upset about, too. <laughs> like, the uh -uh. news is always <laughs> something negative. Like, I don't want to see that. Yeah. Like, Debbie Downer. Exactly. I would legit just, I would take that money, put it under my bed. I would pay some bills if I needed to. Like, that would be you my emergency. You wouldn't worry about where it came from. I, it's like no. drug money, blood money. 
See, now you're putting like a <laughs> conscious on it. I mean, that's it. where I go. See, like immediately. I would not want to put a conscious on it. I would just think like, you know, my karma's been so good. I've been sending out this love and light to the world and the world is sending <laughs> oh, it back God. to me and marked $100 bills. <laughs> yeah. Like why can that be so? I feel like it would be okay if she left a note, but she left a little tiny note usually, but it wasn't like Hi, like she doesn't have to say her name, but just like, I'm a vet, blah, blah, blah. This is why I'm giving it to you. Then I would totally keep it. I would feel legit about it. But just being like, love always me. Like, here, take <laughs> yeah. this. Did like, she even do that? Because, like, the, the night, the one with the um, little sister, yeah. it was just two stacks. Yeah, no. And the <laughs> hospital guy had was, one. Yeah, his was, I'm sorry. Yeah. Like, she it, shot I would immediately know that's the chick that shot me <laughs> yeah. in the knee. Mm -hmm. And now she's talking about she's sorry. But since she is sorry, yeah, I'm going to count the these bills. bills. <laughs> exactly. I'm going a, I'm to a count these bills. And, you know, I'm going to take some time off from work. He deserve that money. <laughs> yes, he does. He deserved that. If 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 that happened to you, would you take the money? If someone if shot had you an, in the I'm knee. I'm sorry, of course. You would take there it. There was at least a note there that kind of alluded to who it was from. Who it was from. Okay. So you can't take money from a complete <laughs> stranger. Never. But if you know like it's from someone specific <laughs> or you have a for like, a specific reason. Yeah, yes. a remnant of who it might be, then it's okay. For a specific reason. Yeah. I need to know what it's for. What am I being paid for? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, no, I'll just take it. Yeah. Uh, good karma. Yeah, yeah good, good karma. karma yep. You know what? One thing I noticed is so off topic from this, but <laughs> it must be in the, no, seriously, it must be like in the South thing, but I noticed like everyone goes like, yes, ma'am. I'm from Texas. So. Are you? Mm -hmm. So no, I'm from New York and we just say like, oh, yeah, yeah, no, that's no. A, yeah. <laughs> bye. Okay. Thanks. You know, like when, when I, everybody on the show is like, yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. I feel like I okay, ma'am. I did do that when I very first moved here, and people are not that. They're like, ma'am, and even now, if I'm ever called ma'am, I'm like, what? No, really? Yeah. So I get upset. Yeah, me too. It I'm sounds a, like I'm an not old lady. Old? Yeah. That. Uh, so, okay. So, yeah. <laughs> but when I first moved here, yes, like that's it's just polite. It's, it's like yes, ma'am, no sir. Even now, sometimes I'll go no sir or something like that to men. Especially. I do it like when I'm on the phone with one of those bill people and I'm trying <laughs> to get like, them look, to reduce my bill. No, no, I'm so nice. Like, oh, thank you, ma'am. How's your day today, <laughs> ma'am? But that's because you know I'm right. just trying to get that Sprint bill lowered right. because <laughs> I need it lowered. Right. But, you know, besides that, I just, I'm like, I grew up, I guess, with no manners. And whenever no, I hear... it's a different way of life. Yeah, different way of life. Because upstate or just New York, I guess, up versus down, we don't have manners. We'll just say, yeah, no, bye. Yeah. Down in, I guess, in Texas, it's like, no, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah. And it's, it's like that fine line between making you feel old as dirt right, and making right. you feel like, oh my God, they're so polite and respectful and you know, like they're just, you know, it just makes you smile because it's, it's, for me, it's not common. And that's one thing I noticed in the show, they just make it seem so like down home hospitality yeah. is everybody's like, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. But I just thought that was so cute. I just had to bring that up because that yeah. was in the back of my mind. Yeah, no, it, it does. It adds like a polite touch to it. And it's not out of place in that situation but if it was like based in LA you'd be like what like why are they calling me ma'am exactly. yeah I mean I was born in LA but I grew up you know close by and we've oh, the first time I'm like oh yes ma'am they're just like oh my old I grew up with manners but like <laughs> yeah. oh, thank you you're welcome yeah. been polite but never yeah. that never Southern that ma'am or like if someone's like excuse me ma'am it's like oh mm -hmm. yeah excuse me like now I feel like I'm not like a 18 anymore. So if someone calls me ma'am, I'm like, excuse me? Yeah, like, I'm not 40. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> like, I'm still a spring chicken. Yeah, the worst is when they stop carding you at Trader Joe's. Um, they card you at Trader Joe's? Yeah. yeah. For what? Alcohol. Alcohol. Wine. You don't buy, <laughs> like, I mean, you don't buy wine at Trader Joe's? I get carded everywhere. But I don't, yeah, I yeah. don't. Should I start? Well, uh, I mean, I yeah. get upset when they don't card me. It's At like, Trader Joe's. I mean, I didn't buy wine at Trader Joe's. That's so why I'm just like, should I? Oh, yeah, you should um, definitely buy some. Wine. Okay, so you guys have to put me on okay. That because yeah. I apparently don't know the business like about <laughs> the good wine. You gotta do it. So let's talk about the the final ending here, which we were touching on before, as far as like Andrew oh, right. getting away, and like she takes the doctor like hostage, and she's just in it. Like I just wasn't feeling how they were trying to like kill her, you know? Like they were just, I just like knew take she was the gonna shot. Live. I just I was like okay. Like, so it was very cliche for you. Very. Mm. I didn't love it. Mm. I wasn't, there was not one time where I was like, I wonder if 
she's not gonna make it. See, seriously, I thought like when Molly said, you know, stand down, she's a vet, blah, blah, blah. They were gonna do that, but when like the FBI lady was like, no, give me that. Take the shot. I'm like, oh shoot. So maybe it's really gonna be over for her. So and then at those the guy is like getting ready and then you see the the, the vet tat and so I'm yeah. like, all right, okay. Cliche. You know, yeah. I mean I was kinda happy she wasn't gonna die. I mean I don't want her why'd you want her to die? I didn't want her to die. I just yeah. wanted at least like God. I know. I know, so morbid. But <laughs> I wanted at least like a little bit of oh my gosh, like maybe she takes a bullet to the shoulder, or something right that wasn't just so, oh, we got her in custody, snooze fest, like I mean, I just yeah. wanted a little bit something more. Me too. I wanted her to drive off. I wanted you know. her to drive off the building. Yeah. Yeah. Do the like motorcycle. Do like a little flip. Yeah. Like, that would have been like, fun. With a cape. Like, or like I more of a go. chase a little bit. I don't know. It yeah. just felt like they cornered her pretty quickly. They got her. They, you know, and then she was arrested and everything was all good. And then know? it was like, well, you know, I mean. Well, she didn't die, but I don't know. Maybe like the fans and stuff should like write to the show and be like, "Hey, like you know, amp it up a little bit." I mean, maybe they don't feel that way. I don't know. That's just my opinion. Maybe, maybe. But speaking of speaking of fans, let's talk about a little news and gossip. Yeah. Well, wait. We forgot the end of our episode where Dan Um, has been shot. We find out that Dan has been shot. We don't know any details about it, but that was. At least intriguing to me about. So we'll week. get to that point in a moment, but let's go to news and gossip. Do you guys have any? After Buzz TV news. <laughs> about 11 hours ago, Latina.com confirmed that after the six episodes that were it's canceled. They're not bringing well, it back. Well, it was supposed to be eight, yeah. and now it's only six. And, and they were supposed to do a panel at the TCA panels that was uh-huh. this last week and weekend. And the panel was canceled, which was a huge, I mean, indicator that something was going on. Yeah. Um, So, yeah, I mean, they're only going to do six episodes instead of eight, which is kind of a bummer. But, it is. um, you know, they have six episodes to wow us. And you never know the power of the fans. It's been done before. If you really like the show, write in in and, you know, make your voice heard. And stranger things have happened. Yeah. Yeah, guys, if you really like Killer Women, you want to see more of it, you have to go on ABC website. You have to go on Twitter. Twitter is a very good place mm-hmm. to go yeah. and just voice, like, you know, more and more and more. We, don't, we like it. You know, don't cancel it. All those good things. So, you know, I'm a little sad to say <laughs> that there will only be, what, three episodes left. Yeah. But, you know, you never know. It could always be revamped or come Another back. Another network could pick it up. Yeah, exactly. All and those they've good shot things. eight episodes, even though they're only going to air six. Six. So, so. You know. Yeah. So, yeah, no, that's excellent. And now, of course, let's go into the end and talking about predictions of next week because Dan. And now, you're after <laughs> Buzz TV. Prediction. Predictions. Yeah. So, so, we know Dan has been shot. We know absolutely nothing about right. Dan being shot. We know that he's been subpoenaed into court with Jake. I'm just saying. We know that him and Molly are not on the up and up. And, you know, you never know if Billy or someone else. But anyway, I'm just saying Dan's been shot. We have no idea. So what are you guys' predictions for next week? Well, we should say we didn't get to see the preview. We missed it. So uh, we have, like, no idea. We're totally doing this blind. Yeah. So don't judge us at yeah. home. We're just, like, going off the cuff, like, oh, my God, what do we think? Okay. It's totally Jake the Snake. The uh, yeah. Ooh, oh, yeah. 150%. Totally, I yeah. agree. Yeah? He has something to do with it, yes. Because all of that political clout, you think, like, he had him set up? Yeah. Mm-hmm. He shot him or something. Or something. something. He hired somebody. <laughs> yeah. He was like, "You're not when I subpoena you, you don't come to court? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Oh, uh, let me see. I think that he was doing his DEA thing, as always, and... You know, things got hot and heavy. You know how he just, you know, he's always running after drugs, falling out of the sky and stuff. You never know. Maybe he caught the wrong drugs and somebody came and, you know, all those crazy things. But I think that it's on the job that Dan got hurt. Not Jake the, not Jake the Snake. <laughs> but I guess we'll have to tune in next week to <laughs> yeah. find out if it was Jake the Snake that uh, actually... You know, did that. You know what? I wonder what they did because they shot eight episodes. They're only airing six. Mm. Are they shooting? Did they, like, are they just airing the six and then, like, stopping? Because obviously they 
shot yeah. a finale type episode. Yeah. Or are they like mixing them up? Like cutting of? and editing yes. and going to give us a little closure. Yeah, that would That's be great. What I wonder. If not, I'm going to complain and yeah. I'm going to be one of those angry fans that goes on Twitter like, hey, I want an ending for my I after know show. How this ends. <laughs> and at least yeah. give it to us or post it on yeah. the ABC website or something. Exactly. Sure. Exactly. Exactly. Well, that wraps up another after show here Woo-hoo. at After Buzz TV. Again, I'm your host, Chloe Onyx, and you can catch me on Instagram at Chloe Onyx and on Twitter at Chloe Onyx, the number 11. And I am Candice Buenrostro, and you can catch me on Twitter or Instagram at Candy Buen, C A N D I E Buen. B-U-E-N. I don't like following you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm Sarah Huggins, and you can catch me on Twitter at Sarah on the go, Sarah with an H. Yes. So thank you guys, and we'll see you next week. Bye. From executive producers Maria Manunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principal. Thank you for watching AfterBuzz TV on YouTube. For more of your favorite after shows and interviews, subscribe to our channel here, and be sure to share your opinion on the episode in the comment section below here. We'd love to see what you guys are buzzing about. Thanks again. Buzz you later.